I knew we were gonna um, trigger somebody with this. We did. You remember the title for the uh, MPD video we did yesterday, Jim? Uh, yeah, not off the top of my head. But it said but, crime is down, right? It was uh, cops are scared, freedom is up, crime is down, MPD traffic stops plummet. And and there were there were several people on Twitter who saw that title of a YouTube video. The Adam, this is so dishonest. Ed, how can you say that crime is down? Everybody knows that crime is up. And it's like, what's your definition of crime? You keep using that word. I don't think it means what you think it means. If I if I if I were to smoke cannabis right now, like and 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 this isn't cannabis, of course. This is this is this is tobacco in a, in a, in, a, in a little glass pipe. Uh, obviously, uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't do such a thing as as smoke cannabis on YouTube. I mean, on a on a public channel. But if I was smoking cannabis, for example, like if I if I were to just go like this. I'm not committing any crime because there's no victim. Not by any stretch of the imagination could you say that uh, an individual consuming any drug alone, peacefully, on their own property has any. And of course, if they, you know, some people want to stretch and say, "Well, if you're broadcasting." By the way, for today, obviously, this is this is theatrics. This is this is this is just nicotine. Uh, just you know to. You know, if I, if I was broadcasting it, I might be corrupting the youth of America or you know, someone else's child, and there, there's a there's a victim. But you know what? That's not what we're talking about here, right? So, you know, if I'm doing something by myself, not hurting anybody by any stretch of the imagination or twist of logic, even there's no crime, and yet government has, in many places, made such victimless activity illegal that doesn't make it a crime except in that their their government designation sense right now if the president says like i'm i'm like nixon well if the president does it then that means it's not illegal and you know and he goes, he's basically claimed the same thing and saying well i could pardon myself i can do whatever i want i'm the president you, you gave me this power screw you and uh, well, it's, 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 is that really how it works? I don't know. It doesn't matter, though, because if the president one day says, well, it's legal for me as the president to commit murder. If I murder someone, it's not a crime. And wait a second. Uh, no. That's still a crime. And that would be a criminal president. And it makes no difference if it's the president or a cop under a different legal excuse, color of law, if they're committing a crime. And this is why reasonable suspicion is the important articulated but rarely followed legal standard for when, can, like Jim, like in a citizen's arrest, when would it be okay for you to stop someone else? You can't just go stopping strangers on the street saying, I think you might, I don't like the way you look. Yeah, only if there's physical violence, uh, theft, or property damage taking place, right? Well, the reasonable suspicion that you are committing or have committed a crime, right? That's, that has a victim, right? Right, and and, and so like if I were to if, if I if you and I were walking down the street and I said, I don't know, man, I don't like his beard. He probably robbed that store I heard about last week. I'm going to stop him, right? You, you'd be like, what? No, screw that. I'm I'm committing a, a crime of a wrongful arrest, right? But if I have reasonable suspicion, right? You know, like we, we, we had a robbery at, at my store and I saw, you know, a, a security camera footage and you look just like the guy in the security camera footage. Eh, maybe, right? Or if, if you're in the act, right? If you're actually hurting someone or, or, you just did and it's for accountability right like if you just killed someone with your car and you're trying to take off hit and run 
you're evading responsibility for a crime and it might be justified in a citizen's arrest scenario to detain you against your will to take responsibility for that crime right or if you're you know if you're if you're in the act of beating someone up obviously to to, to stop and, and intervene but if i stop you cuz of some excuse of well you did a drug that i don't like or that my piece of paper says it makes it okay for me to uh, violate your rights the cops are criminals in these situations when you get pulled over for no reason no justification and there may be some i'm not saying ne never is any traffic stop justified if someone is genuinely driving recklessly and a hazard to others that person should be stopped yeah absolutely you know and again getting law enforcement down to the local level to the community level right uh, when the, the law, public safety officers, law enforcement are enforcing law in line with the community's need, they are actually serving that as opposed to serving the corrupt politicians who get to pass laws that are forced on people in ways that they never get to see or they're not personally victimized by because they're they're part of that political super class. So no, I, I don't, I, I didn't mean to take so much time on this, but when police in Minneapolis come out and say, Traffic stops for us are down 80% from what they were this week last year. I go, great, that's a lot less crime happening. That's a lot less legal crime happening under color of law. That's a lot less citizen harassment by police. That's huge. And is there a deterrent effect of, of, of all of this? That's that's really even statistically debatable. But uh, crimes going up? No, no. When when you recognize how criminal our government is at all levels, and you go, oh, government is doing less. That generally means a lot less crime overall. So that was fun to see people triggered by that. Speaking of which, Jim. Uh, any comments so far this morning or, or anything you saw in comments related to that segment yesterday? I thought that was fun. I knew it was going to trigger people. I'm glad that it did. Yeah, well, triggering people is what causes them to think critically, and that's what the world definitely needs more of. So there's no problem. Uh, Mr. Yapel says it's a pandemic. That's what he was calling it. I don't know why I didn't think of that earlier when you were asking for names of them. That's yeah, okay. no, I was I was thinking about that too, but I kind of wanted to leave out the category of names that paint a more accurate picture of reality. <laughs> fair <laughs> enough, uh, fair enough. But yeah, pandemic. <coughs> see, I I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that term overall. I mean, obviously, I like it, but like in terms of you know the precision, I I don't use it. You know, I don't I don't call. I mean, there. I guess. Did they? Because it implies that they planned the whole thing, and and I think a lot of people who are using the term pandemic are suggesting or have suggested, and I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. You know, just exploring the term here, that government was behind the virus itself and the release of the virus, and that everything along the way was planned. And I go. Uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a little skeptical of that narrative. Now, what here here's what makes that a lot more plausible, right? Maybe the plan all along was, all right, guys, next time we have a funky off-season flu virus like H1N1 that meets these criteria, we'll make sure it's we'll make sure it's just barely about it's, it's about as dead. We'll pick one that's about as deadly as the flu. So that people can debate and be divided over that. And then we're going to blow it up in the media and turn it into a global financial and forced unemployment crisis that's going to allow us to reboot the economy and be more in charge of the new system. Um, yeah, OK. But then that kind of discounts the fact that there is a real pandemic happening along. With, I mean, it's 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 real. It's my it's, and it sucks to be in this position. 
to downplay real human suffering, right? Because that's what we have to do right. to counter this narrative. They, they put you in a bad box, almost. Yeah. To say, well, are you are you really going to say that these thousands of people who have died, and you know, it might be a few more, but we can debate that. But then, what kind of what kind of inhumane asshole are you for talking about that? You know, and how dare you discount all of this human suffering that's happening? And it's like. You have to fight through that self-consciousness and misperception in order to take on the people who are creating so much more human suffering. Oh. Well, it's, it's a crazy fun. time to be alive. I, I you know, I, I, you know, being in this situation, I'm pretty happy. You know, I get, I, I, I suppose I'm kind of right where I need to be. I'm here on the internet ranting about everything that's happened in the world. I, although I think presenting a current view of world events through a more accurate lens than you'll get through the mainstream media is a nicer way of putting it than Adam ranting on the internet for two hours every day, right? For sure. Uh, Draco mentions, he's saying shootings and murders are up in New York City and Chicago. He's saying, uh, well, we were talking about the police thing. He says, Unwarranted stops may be down, great, but crimes like shootings and murders are up in areas where police presence is reduced. So that, I mean, that's kind of different from what you were talking about though, right? You were mentioning- Well, yeah, you know, so there's there's a couple things, you know, I'm glad you brought that up, Jim and Draco. Thank you for pointing this out because that, that really does get to the crux of it. And it, it, from what I just said, which isn't, I mean, you know, go watch the video from yesterday or, or check out the podcast, please. But to, to address that point, at least, let's say in a city that experiences three police shootings of innocent people per month and one civilian shooting per month, well, if police-related shootings go to zero and civilian violence doubles... Your total deaths still went down from four to two. Is that, was that obvious enough, Jim, with the math? So on a regular yeah. month, police kill three people, civilians kill one person, police go away, civilian violence doubles. Now, all right, people, oh my God, civilian violence doubles. But you have two people being shot per month as opposed to uh, four, four people being shot per month. That's a reduction in overall violence. Right now, is, is, is it as simple as that? Now, maybe is, is one person gets murdered, who would another, like, yeah. Am I gonna try to weigh out these human tragedies and, and quantify, like, how many, you know, I'd rather be stopped by unjustified traffic stops, you know, a, a, a thousand times than be murdered. You can't really compare those. But we don't have reliable statistics on these things, you know. And what if someone being sh you know, and I'm I'm willing to say there may be a legitimate increase in overall suffering by violence as a result of of you know, what's happening today. But would you say that's because of lower police presence? No. I mean, look at how these things normally track. Where does civilian violence happen? Oh, is is oh. it out here in places like Juniper Wood? Right. Is also, it in Rome? It's where there are a lot of cops enforcing drug laws and stop and frisk and all these other things that promote civilian violence. Also, I think it's worth mentioning that I think that a lot of the unemployment crisis and everything, the, a lot of people are yes. more desperate. Even if nothing changed with the cops, violence would probably still be up because people are desperate right now. People yes. are being made to be so desperate that, of course, violence is up, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that would Correlation. be the if the cops were still there. Right. Right. Correlation versus versus causation, confusion there. Did because so yeah, there there would you would think and actually. I mean, and, you know, this is when, when you, it, it, it's kind of a weird 
bias to keep in mind, but it's a bias of reality, a bias of truth, a bias of how we perceive the world when we attempt to do so through the mainstream media. As you look into things, the general bias is that the reality is much more peaceful than you thought. When they go back and present even historical periods as, as tumultuous, you go back and it's like, no, but most humans alive during that time led pretty normal lives. You know, when, when they're going to talk about, like, for, for example, the, our recent Trumpian history of, you know, Antifa versus whoever, Trump supporters, and, you know, all, all the, you know, America's so polar, they're going to you know, write the history of this period as Americans were fighting in the streets. And if, if you take that just at face value as someone trying to accurately portray reality and history, you go, wow, oh my gosh, Americans were fighting and there were fist fights in the streets over Trump. But then you go, yeah, these were still statistical aberrations, anomalies, insignificant in terms of overall assaults. You know, like, did, did, did the overall assault rate go up under Trump due to political polarization fighting? No, those were just a lot of, there's just this time when there were the, these trending videos that everybody was paying attention to because they were sensationalistic and they served the media's sense of self-importance and blowing themselves up or blowing the, the, the issues up and, and making a bigger deal out of things. You know, even the deaths with Corona, we, we are putting them in perspective like never before. Anyway, um, so, yeah, there, it, it, uh, but to even correlate, the, to, to attempt to correlate these things is it, it, such an unrealistic stretch of credulity here to, to say that more murders are happening because less police are present. Now, police are still responding to murder calls, but their rate of being able to intervene in murders is still zero or next to it, just as it was before. Again, when seconds count, police are just minutes away. To say that, 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 that there are enough criminal minds out there going, well, I didn't see as many cops patrolling today, so I think I'm going to go shoot somebody. No. No, it's just it, to, to, to attempt to say that a reduced police presence, that if we get rid of this criminal gang, that overall crime will go up? No. Doesn't hold any water with me or anybody who cares about, you know, truth logic, reason, things like that.